dark was my day. I looked for a friend. I looked for a friend. Not knowing that he had all of the time been looking for me. Now it is Jesus and me for each tomorrow. For every heart.
I told Morgan this morning, you see me, you tell him I said, hey, so maybe she will, I don't know. And uh, But thank you for your support and all of that. And it was a good day yesterday. And y'all pray for me because now I'm in Kim Beaver's family. <laughs> now we're related, so we need your prayers. Uh, no, we're just, just kidding about that. It's, it's going to be good. Looking forward to all God's going to do through Andrew and Morgan. And uh, looking forward to, to, to God blessing that. So when I asked me this morning, did you, when you tied the knot, was it a square knot? I said it was, and a bunch of safeties. It's not coming undone, amen? And uh, we'll make sure of that. And uh, But thank you so much for that in advance. And thank you for being here today. We've got a good missionary you're going to present to us in just a second. Brother wants to go ahead and get that uh, presentation going just a moment. Brother Coleman's going to come and uh, present his ministry. And then uh, I think him, they're going to sing a song, I think, him and his wife and the kid maybe even. So man, you guys will enjoy that. And uh, thank you for being here. Ross, that Brother Campbell's going to preach to us in just a moment. And I'll introduce him a little bit better in just a few minutes. Thank you for Miss Becky today filling in for Brother John. Uh, Brother John was on vacation, came home just to play in the wedding, and then went back to vacation. Isn't that good of John to do that? It was either John or myself, you know, and I was kind of busy yesterday, so it had to be John. Uh, so thank you, Miss Hattie, for coming and uh, for uh, playing the piano for us. And good to see Brother Roger, isn't it? Amen. Two weeks ago today, he was having a heart attack. And I was in church leading music, and I told him, as soon as he was class, he, he had two stents put in and has another one in a couple weeks. So he bought two, gets one free. Amen. I was for an argument. So uh, you pray for the Roger and you didn't have him back. Let's pray together, okay? Lord, thank you for this good day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for another uh, Lord's Day you've given to us to go to worship the Lord. And I do pray as we uh, focus on our, our missions this day, would you bless that? Would you encourage your people today? And might you challenge us this year to just step out of faith and do what we've done before. And God, thank you for what you're going to do through the music, through the presentation, most importantly, through the preaching of your word. Bless this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Have a seat, please. And I uh, do want to invite uh, this is Brother Coleman. Brother Coleman's ministry is uh, Eagle, uh, Beings as Eagles. And talk about that and uh, what the Lord's doing in that ministry. And then we'll see the video uh, shortly, I think we will. Okay, the mic's not hooked up, so Brother Coleman, just use the mic here. How about that? We tried hooking the microphone up last night, but you know how that goes. <laughs> All right, so Brother Coleman's going to present and to show his video, and then we're going to sing. God bless you, Brother Coleman. Thank you for having us with you. If uh, my family could stand, we're the Coleman family, missionaries with wings as eagles, my wife Kim, my oldest Elliot, and then Marcella, and we've got Laurel in the nursery, and then my wife is due uh, January sometimes. So. Coleman family, we just thank you for, for having us with you. Uh, real quick, if you would open to Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. There's just one verse I want you to look at. Find it myself here. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 51 says, Mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Uh, we're in an aviation ministry, and the goal and vision of the ministry is to get believers like you that are in churches all across the United States out to the mission field on a short-term missions trip so that your heart can be affected for missions with what your eyes see. I believe every Christian ought to go on a mission trip at least once in their life, if not once every other year or every year, every five years. Uh, I believe it's a life-changing event for most Christians when they get to go on a mission trip and see the mission field with their own eyes. If the brother upstairs is ready, I'll go ahead and show the video and then talk just a little bit more, and then we'll sing. Terry Rushing, the director of Wings as Eagles Mission Air Service based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin at Wildwood Baptist Church. The Wings as Eagles ministry was founded back in 1984 by Captain Bob Warner with a vision to get local church people out to the mission field. 
One of the first uh, first projects that we began with the Wings of Eagles Ministry back in the late uh, 80s was a project that I became acquainted with uh, through a missionary in Papua New Guinea. And I took Pastor Rick Scarberry from Twin Ports Baptist Church in Superior, Wisconsin. And uh, that particular trip and Pastor Rick uh, Scarberry's heart uh, just moved upon him where after that trip he took many missionary trips to uh, spread the gospel and do things for the cause of Christ. We've seen them have such an effect in helping other people broaden their horizons and what missions needs to be in people's lives. For me personally, I believe that it helped me to see a different country uh, and be more burdened for America. The lost people are very lost wherever they're at, whether it's in your hometown or whether it's in a foreign country. And because of the contrast, the different language, the different food, the different lifestyle, it becomes very evident that their need for the gospel is enormous. I've had the privilege of going both into Canada and into Mexico with the Wings Ministry and having shared their missionary, missionary vision for their field. And what it does is it enables me to come home and to encourage others. Um, I have a vision then for another, yet another mission field. Every church has to have a burden for souls and missions. That's the lifeblood of the church. I'm just praising the Lord and what a, a tool that God has allowed uh, with an airplane to bring people to the mission field and allow them to broaden their horizons and, and see beyond the four walls of a church building and uh, be, be affected for the gospel's sake of uh, reaching people and, and allowing our lives to be used of the Lord to affect other people. Back in 84, that was our vision, and that continues to be our vision today to help get the local church involved in outreach into foreign missions and accomplishing the Great Commission goals, both locally and around the world. Uh, the Wings as Eagles ministry is a aviation helps ministry, and the airplane is used in a number of different ways in North America, and in uh, Central America, and also here in Africa. And I thank the Lord for the way that we've been able to use small airplanes to transport pastors, uh, missionaries, evangelists, uh, missions teams, local church members um, around the country of Cameroon where the road system is not the greatest and in some places it's, it's uh, non-existent. In 2006 and 2007 we built this airplane that's sitting behind me in the Wings Eagles hangar and uh, flown over here in 2008 and God has been using it in mighty ways to further the gospel here. A number of churches have been planted directly as a result of this airplane. There's a lot of positive things that I drew from this trip uh, and how the aviation component actually has helped to open doors to start several churches. And one of the similarities of how we use the airplanes in Cameroon, um, similar to the way we use them in America, is I've been able to fly our own church members here from Believers Baptist Church and from a number of local churches in Cameroon, been able to take them to their own mission field um, not only in our own local town, other villages around us, but to to just awaken them to the need of their own people, their own country, and has really changed the lives of a lot of people in my own church and in local churches around us. And I would thank the Lord for the use of the airplanes to speedily get to where it's very difficult to go. The Wings ministry has opened lots of doors. Many churches have been started because of it. They're doing all the right things as far as preaching the gospel, evangelizing. Hello, my name is Samuel Komen, missionary and trip coordinator with Wings as Eagles Missionary Service. In 2014, while in Bible college, God called me to preach into full-time service. And in 2014, I felt the Lord's calling to join Wings as Eagles to fulfill three purposes. First, to evangelize the lost by any means. Second, to bring Christians to the mission field and to encourage them to support missions and that God might call some of those Christians to the mission field. And third, to help missionaries and pastors within their local ministries and to encourage them in the Lord. One of the visions of the Wings of Eagles ministry is also to help train young missionary pilots through flight training in Oshkosh and exposure through aircraft maintenance at our flight camp. 
and I've gone to flat camp two years in a row now. Um, it's been a great learning experience for the mechanical training and, and the air training you get, as well as uh, the experience in God's Word and, and the godly influences that are there. Wings as Eagles has really um, opened a lot of doors to travel around and see how God has used aviation to further further His kingdom. Flight camp has been a very, very exciting tool for Wings to impact young men's lives. Uh, we have boys four, ages 14 to 20 come to camp and we give them four hours of flight instruction and then we saturate them with missionary uh, contacts through our missions classes. And we've seen uh, several young people go on to the full-time Christian service star ministry. We've seen uh, several kids come to know Christ through the flight camp. But flight camp is, to me, exciting because we get the kids away from their, their home life, away from the world, and we get to just impact them and see what God does for them for, for that week. Wings as Eagles Flight Camp is a great resource for any young man interested in missions aviation. After graduating from Bible College in 2014, my family and I moved to Oshkosh, Wisconsin with the intentions of serving with Wings. And in 2016, we joined Wings as Eagles and have been serving with them since then. In the last two years, I have had the privilege of going on three trips with Wings, one to Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, Canada, one to Guatemoc, Mexico, and one to Cameroon, Africa. I also have been able to be a counselor at our flight camp for young men. In all of these, God has let me fulfill all three of those burdens God put on my heart. Also, to team up with missionaries for church planning efforts around the world. Right now we're in Cameroon, but we've also worked in Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, down in Central America, in Guatemala and Honduras, and in other places around the United States with both church planning and evangelistic efforts. I am now in training to become a pilot and plan on furthering that training to be able to train missionary pilots here in Oshkosh. Please pray for my family, that we would be used of God to fulfill His will in our lives and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the entire world. Thank you. And our hope is that you would help team up with the Wings as Eagles ministry, either to come on a mission trip with the Wings ministry or possibly to, to support with prayer or finances this outreach that God is using to reach many people around the world or maybe God would even have you to serve with the Wings Ministry in some capacity in the future. Pray about that and see what God could use you to do with Wings as Eagles Missionary Service. Thank you. The, the ministry has two airplanes right now. One is the Piper Chieftain, which is the two-seater. We take that up into Canada, down into Mexico, and throughout the Caribbean. Then we have a Cessna 172, and that's the one we use to train missionary pilots. Uh, my family's burden, uh, originally we were trying to me to get all the way to be a flight instructor. Uh, since then, a man's joined the ministry that's a flight instructor, so that need is not there. Um, but my family's burden is to be an encouragement to missionaries. I told the, the men in the uh, Sunday school class that, you know, missionaries, more missionaries are coming off the fields today than are surrendering to go out and, and to the fields. And so the world needs more missionaries, not less. And it's, it's getting less right now. And so we want to not only get into churches and preach on missions and encourage God's people to answer, answer the call to uh, get into the battle, to you know, pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth the laborers into his harvest. Not only that, but to go and encourage those missionaries that are out there now so that they will continue on, so they won't come home, so they won't come off that field. Um, our trips involve lots of different things, building programs, building maintenance, scripture distribution, putting on a vacation Bible school or a neighborhood Bible time, uh, airplane maintenance, but I think the biggest thing the ministry does is encourage missionaries to continue in the mission field. Uh, if my family can come on up, we'll go ahead and sing a song and then we'll get out of the way.
surrender all to him i freely give i will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live i surrender all i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all all to jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me now I surrender all I surrender all all to thee Lord, I give myself to thee. That's, that's the main thing. We're going to sing a song, and there is coming a day when we'll all be in heaven. We'll be glad that we participated and gave to missions that extends this church on out. We're going to sing a song with the choir, and look, we've got several people in the choir. Isn't that? I'm excited, you know. They did all this while I was gone, you know. So we're going to sing that. What a day that will be. You can follow along if you want to on uh, page number 
Amen. Would you stand, please, if you will, at this time? And I want you to go around and greet everybody. Our missionaries, the kids are gone, so you won't get to shake their hand until later. But go ahead and greet everybody and introduce yourself even and say, I sure am glad you're here at Liberty Baptist. Do that right now.
was lost in sin and Jesus took me in and then a little light from heaven filled my soul it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about Good, good. Take your Bibles. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. And I'll tell you what's better than that. It's good to be saved. Amen. If you know Jesus as your Savior, say amen. amen. I heard it in most corners of the building here today. And good to see Brother Steve Buchanan. We supported his mission work for many years there at Old Swanee Baptist Church. Good friends of ours. Good to see Brother Greg Howell here, friends with him. We actually went to college together up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Tennessee Temple, and just uh, appreciate him and his ministry through the years. I also love your preacher. He's been up to Old Swanee Baptist Church in Buford and preached a few times. Matter of fact, we're going to try to get him back. And, uh, and always a blessing, always a blessing. Buford is the northern part of Atlanta. You're the southern part, we're the northern part, right? So we're all in the same boat, right, amen? And uh, serving the Lord together. Uh, we're in Gwinnett County, so Gwinnett County has about a million people. Uh, wasn't like that when I went there, but there is now. And the mission field is wide open up there in, in Gwinnett County. And we're glad to be a part of God's work there, serving the Lord. I've been at the church about almost 40 years. Uh, and the uh, Lord's really blessed us, and God has just continued to use us. I feel right at home today, preacher, I do. I enjoyed the good singing, the piano playing, the organ, the picking the guitar, and, and the good songs of Zion and being with you. I feel like I'm right at home. I hope I am, and uh, appreciate you making it feel like that today. Uh, I want to bring you a message today. I hope it will be an encouragement to you and something a little different maybe from what you've heard before. And, and I've taken my text here from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 1. So if you'd look at your Bible there, I'll read the, the Scriptures for us today. It says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... We uh, have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Amen. Don't you love the truth today, the word of God? Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid... It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
But we have this treasure. Amen. Don't we have a treasure today? Amen. Amen. The gospel message is the greatest treasure on earth. And you open it up and it gives you all the treasures of heaven, eternal life, eternal salvation, heaven forever, a wonderful life here on this world. Man, I'll tell you what, I love the gospel, don't you? Amen. Praise God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power, listen to this now, may be of God and not of us. Amen. Aren't you glad for that today? I want to bring you a message on putting the goal back into the gospel. Putting the goal back into the gospel. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for your word. Lord, I'm glad I have handled it today the word of truth. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me as I handle it again, as I preach, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And I pray, God, that you'd use the message to encourage the people of God. Lord, people all around need encouragement from heaven today. And I pray that you'll lift them up this morning. If there's a soul here today that doesn't know Jesus, I pray they'll come to the place where they realize they're a sinner and need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved today and gain that everlasting life through Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that I'll help this church who is already faithful in missions. Lord, to you'll bless them beyond measure in this coming year. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Putting the goal back into the gospel. You know, that's an important word, isn't it? Go. Didn't Jesus say this? Yeah. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I think that's the most important thing we could ever do for all of eternity is to preach the gospel to every creature. Go. Go is the first two letters of the gospel. You know, I tell people we need to go and spell out the gospel, right? Go and tell people who Jesus is. Go and tell people what Jesus did on the cross. Go and tell people what the power of the gospel can do in their life if they'll believe on Christ, call on his name for that great salvation. Do you remember when you got saved, by the way? Do you remember that when you heard the gospel? I grew up in a Christian home. I went off to Christian college, Tennessee Temple University. My second year of college, I was sitting in none other than a mission conference, of all things, right? A mission conference, listening to the preacher preach, and I'm telling you, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost came upon me and said, Son, you grew up in a Christian home. You went to church all your life, but you have never trusted Christ as your personal Savior. Think about that just a moment. Boy, the, the Spirit of God, was I was shaking. You know, I was holding on to the pew. I was saying, oh, me? I mean, I grew up in a Christian home. That doesn't save you, does it? I went to a Bible-preaching church. That doesn't save you. It's a good place to get saved, isn't it, right? But I'll tell you, that night I heard the gospel, right? The gospel. You know what I did that night? I left my place in the balcony there, and I headed down to that altar and got on my knees and asked Christ to forgive my sins and save my soul. And that moment and, to, and until this day and for all eternity, I am saved forever by His grace. You know, that's the goal of the gospel, right? Go, and we need to take the gospel to the world. So if we got to put the go back into the gospel, who took it? You ever thought about that? Who took the go out? Well, I was telling someone uh, we had over the past couple of years about 22 missionaries come off the field. Now, it's not, not always bad, right? It's not always bad. Some retire. Some, some have different conditions, health conditions. All, that's not, but, but that's what happened, right? That's what happened. And now we're looking for people to go, right? To go. Who took the go out of it? And what is it that was really taken? Well, I look at my text and I see this. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the, what's that next word? Light. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, 
should shine unto them. Who is Jesus? He is the light of the world. Amen. When you preach the gospel, you're preaching the gospel of light, right? You're preaching the light of the gospel that can reach a soul and save them from sin. The light of the gospel of salvation. The cure for the curse of sin. The key to, to the shackles of sin to set a man free from sin. The, the, the fountain of everlasting life. The the peace that God, only God can give to you through Jesus Christ. The power to live every day for God. The, the preaching that can change a man's heart and life forever and his destiny for all eternity. That's what uh, Satan wants to stop, that light from shining in this world. But I've got news for you. Satan cannot stop the gospel. Amen. Didn't John say the light shine out in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not? It cannot be stopped, my friends. You can't stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it, uh, Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day, and that message has gone throughout the world. You cannot stop it. So what does Satan do? He tries to stop the light of it, right? He, stop, he tries to stop those and keep them from preaching the gospel and showing that glorious light. So I'm going to tell you, I found out who took it. I did. I found out who took it. I'm going to give you a few of them. There, his name is Mr. Les. I was telling the, the missionary here, I, I know Brother Les Zerby. Les Zerby. He's a missionary bush pilot in, in Africa, went to Alaska, and now he's in Costa Rica serving God. He's older than I am, and that man is doing, is nonetheless, he's doing all he can for the gospel of Christ, I'm telling you. And he, I tell, I, I've flown with him up into Alaska, into regions where you can't drive a car and preach in those areas. And that man puts on an airplane when he flies it, right? He puts it right there. He's, he's, he's uh, living for God and doing his best for the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful missionary. But I thought about his name, and he's not, he's not Mr. Les that took the gospel. He's the Mr. Les that's going with the gospel, amen? But think about Mr. Les, like Mr. Les Care. Mr. Les Care. David said this in Psalm 124, 4. I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my, what is it? Soul. You know, it's awful when nobody cares. The, the, the amazing thing is, though, it's so easy to, for careless to slip into our life, isn't it, right? To become careless. Well, I haven't got time for that, or, or uh, that's, that somebody else is going to do that, or, or I, 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 I could never do this for God. Or I, you know, all those things just show, hey, we, we don't need to become careless. We don't need to become careless. I, I think about the story in John chapter 5 and verse number 5 where there was a man there by the pool he had an infirmity 38 years, and Jesus came by. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw him and knew that he had been a long time in this case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? I'll tell you, all over this world, there are people that are desiring more than what this life has. They know there's something else that they're missing. There's something in their heart they're missing. And I'll tell you who it is. It's Jesus, my friends. And Jesus said, Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. I have nobody that cares. Nobody that will take me to the water when the angel stirred it. No man, no person. Well, you know what? Jesus took care of that, didn't he, right there? He had the greatest friend he could ever have. Jesus said, hey, listen, take up your bed and walk today. Let me give you a new life today. And he did, amen. Oh, we need to, we need to make sure we're not Mr. Less Care, right? How about Mr. Less Love? Less Love. You've heard the story of Mary there in Bethany where Jesus was there, you know, and she came in with that alabaster box and she broke it and she anointed the feet of Jesus. Why do you think she did that? Do y'all think that she loved Jesus because of what he had done in her life? You know what she was not afraid to do? 
Tell that to everybody. When she broke that box, you know what happened, don't you? When she broke that box and spread that ointment on him, my friends, anointed Jesus, what happened? That fragrance filled the room. When the love of Christ is in your life, it's not less love, it's more love to thee, O oh Christ, right? Then the fragrance will fill the space around you, wherever you are. It just filled every crevice of it, right? And she anointed Jesus, and they, you know, some of them complained about it. <laughs> One of them's name was Judas. You know, he held a bag, right? He said, that could have been sold and given to the poor. I don't think he was thinking about the poor, do you? Uh, but, uh, but he said that, and Jesus said, the poor you have always with you, but not me. She's done this, anointing me for my burial. He said, wherever the gospel is preached, she'll be remembered for this. She put the go in the gospel, right? Amen. What did Judas do? He stood against it. As a matter of fact, he had in his mind already going and getting 30 pieces of silver to betray the Son of God. But it didn't work, did it? Because Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, and my friends, and rose again, and the gospel's being preached, and millions have been saved because of it, putting a go into the gospel. Mr. Less Love. We need more love, don't we, like that? like Mary did. Mr. Les Vision, seeing we have this ministry, seeing we have this ministry, we faint not. You know what? We need to not have less vision. We need to have a greater vision for souls. Uh, at our church, I tell you, there's a million people in that region, right? Okay? And it's getting that way down here too, isn't it? It's all over, right? And I've heard some people complain about the traffic. Well, they're right. It's pretty bad, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I used to drive from where I lived to the church in 18 minutes if I ran a stop sign. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. I, you know, got right what I got on that. But uh, now it takes me 40 minutes. You know why? There's a lot more cars between where I live and the church, right? And, uh, and amazing, isn't it? But I tell him, I said, you know what God is doing? He's bringing the mission field to our doorstep, right. right? We shouldn't complain about it. We ought to praise God and go out there and knock on those doors and tell them about Jesus and put the go into the gospel, get a vision for what God's giving us. Amen. Also, Mr. Les Givens. I had a friend named Mr. Givens. He reminded me of that. He, he was a good man, by the way, but Mr. Les Givens. All of you are thinking about your faith promise, right? Your faith promise and, and, uh, and, and uh, what you're going to give this year. Let me share some things with you from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says this. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall, also, shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful What's that next word? Giver. You know, everything about missions is given, isn't it? It's given. Given, I'm using a southern term there. Given, right? It's about giving to me. It's about giving to send the missionary. It's about giving so souls will be saved. It's about giving so church will be planted. It's about giving so lives will be changed forever. It's about giving so we can be a part of it. Praise God. Amen. I want to be a part of that uh, gospel going out. There are three kinds of givers. First, there's the sparing giver. That's the person that looks at the facts without faith. Now, all of us know we only get so much money, right? I only make so much money. I'm on a fixed income, right? Uh, I'm on a salary, you know, and I, I have to live off of that. I do, and, and give my tithes off of that, right? And do my, my, uh, my uh, giving, my offerings to the church and to special needs. But also, I began many years ago to do faith promise giving. That's where I put my faith into the facts, right? I know what I have, but I also know what God can do. That's right. right, amen? That's right. And as I considered my faith promise back in March of this year, I said, God, you know, you know something, Lord. I want to do more this year. You know what I make because you supply that. But I know something. You can supply more. Can you? Amen. Amen. You, can, you know, as a matter of fact, all of us depend on God, don't we? That's right. You say, Pastor, I work hard at my job. I make my money. You know what? God gives you the help to do that. That's right. 
He blesses your business, your company, uh, you, the place where you work. He gives you the strength to do it, the knowledge to do it, the wisdom to do it. You went to college, you learned, he gave you all of that, and he gives you the opportunity to make that money, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. He gives us that. Do you know something, though? I believe God can give more. Hey, I got a little granddaughter up in Canada. My son's a missionary up in Quebec City, Canada, preaching in French this morning. And, uh, and uh, my, my oldest granddaughter, she, she got a, she, when she was a little girl, she got into faith promise missions, giving. And she came to me and she said, Papa, she said, this year, they weren't on, they weren't on a mission field right then, but he said, she said, Papa, I, I want to give to missions. I, I, my faith promise this year is, is $5 for the year. Now, I want to ask you something. Is that $5 important? Yeah. Amen. You know? There are people in my church that give a lot more than that. You know, the missions, and y'all do too. But you know something? To that little girl back then, she's, she's uh, almost going to college now. She's a little girl then. Uh, that was important to her. She said she didn't have an income. I know her daddy didn't give her an allowance because I didn't give him one when he was a kid either, right? We didn't teach him that, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, don't, be, don't, be, don't get on to me now, all right? But, uh, but she, I know she didn't have anything. But you know something? She was faithful. And she'd come back and say, Papa, God gave me my faith promise this week. We were, we were eating, you know, lunch one day out somewhere after church, and, and Ashlyn, she, she rolled down the window of the car before they left. She said, Papa, come here. Come here. I'm going to tell you something. I said, what? She said, do you know today that God gave me all of my faith promise I prayed about for the whole year? Gave me all of it, all $5 today. Somebody just came up to me and gave me $5 for no reason. And now I've given my faith promise, and I'm going to ask God if I can do more. Amen. Man, I'll tell you, that touch your heart, won't it? Yeah. And I asked myself right there when you was talking to me, oh, have you got that kind of faith <laughs> to ask God for more yeah. so that the gospel can go to regions beyond and reach the souls Amen. with the beautiful gospel of Christ? And then Amen. there is the sparing giver, there's the bountiful giver, but there's the distribution giver. You know what that is, don't you? In verse number 10, it says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both ministereth bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being rich in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us the thanksgiving to God. This is what, what that means. Distribution givings means. means you, know, you know what a distribution center is, don't you? That's where they bring in a lot of stuff. We have a lot of them up where I live. A lot of them. Amazon's all over the place, right? They're bringing all this stuff in and shipping it out to different people. You know, that's what God's in, in the business of doing. He, he gives us into the distribution. He makes us distribution centers. He, he supplies us with more than we could do on our own. Have you ever asked God to do more than you could do? Paul mentioned that several times when he was preaching there. Can you, have you ever asked God to do more? You know what? God can do more, can he? He can enable us together to do more. As a church, as my church and your church too, God can supply every need and then give you the blessing from it and the growth and the strength of it. How do we get that go back? Well, we need to get rid of Mr. Less and meet Mr. Moore. Amen. 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 More love, more giving, more caring, more going, uh, more preaching, more teaching, more soul winning, more discipleship, more vision. You know, who stole, who stole the gold from the gospel? Well, I have to admit it. The Bible says, but if our gospel, our, the gospel I carry, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You know who stole the gospel, who took the go out of it. It's not God. Satan can't do it. The only person that can is me. Right? By not allowing the light of the glorious God, gospel, who is the image of God, to shine from me to this world. My friends, what we need to do is get this little light of mine and let it shine today. Amen? And put the go. Ask God, put a go in me for the gospel's sake. Amen. 
while I still have breath. Amen. Father, we're thankful for your word. I'm so thankful for the message of it. And I'm thankful that you put that word go and you've given us that commission. All we have to go do is go and you'll do the rest. Thank you for this good church and their missions giving. May you bless them more abundantly this year. And Lord, not just in their giving, but in the souls they'll reach for Christ. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Preacher. Amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning, please? Stand to your feet. We're going to have music in just a moment. But you've heard a very good message today about the gospel. Amen. The go of the gospel. And I appreciate the Lord using Brother Campbell this morning. But here's the question. What did God do in your heart this morning? God reminded me of my responsibility. I'm, I'm the pastor, yeah, but I'm a Christian first. And I'm to do my part, what God has me to do. And I'll do that. And I'll do that. I wonder if God has spoken to you this morning. And with your heads bowed and eyes closed, we can go ahead and play, Miss Becky and Brother Jim, go ahead and play, whatever it is. And if God spoke to you this morning, would you just make a decision, God, let me be the one that puts the go back in the gospel. I'm the one who took it. Let me put it back in there. Maybe God spoke to you today. You need to come to the altar and pray and say, God, help me this year to do more than I've ever done to put the go back in the gospel. Maybe you need to come and pray this morning. But most importantly, if you're here, without Christ as your Savior, He wants to save you. He died for your sins. He rose again and is coming back one day. Are you saved this morning? If you died, are you sure of heaven as your home? Are you sure of that this morning? Do you know God is your Savior through Jesus Christ? Then are you giving how God wants you to give? Are you going? Are you praying? Are you being that distribution center God wants to use you to be? If you need to come, would you come now this morning? If you need to come to the altar, come on now and pray. Would you do that? Anybody at all need to come to the altar today to make a decision? Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing with the gospel? How about you today? How about you? have a seat just for a moment. I have our men. Would you guys come down with the offering plates again? Uh, our, our ushers to come down. We're going to receive the Faith Promise Commitment Cards for the year for this service. We'll do it again tonight. So if you get those things ready, if you had not yet turned yours in. And I uh, just want to remind you, um, like I said, on Wednesday, I believe it is. And uh, whatever it is, if God has not changed your mind about your, the amount you did last year, we need record of that, if you would, please. Um, there's no place in here for your name. This is between you and God. And uh, I don't recognize any of y'all's handwriting, so I can't figure out now, who is doing what. I don't know. Uh, it's not up to me. It's up to the Lord to use us. So you do what God's asked you to do. Come on down, guys, with those offering plates and get those uh, faith promise cards out if you would. And uh, we'll pray about those in just a moment. So come on down, gentlemen. Come make your way down. And uh, we'll do that. And uh, as we do that, have Miss Becky play something as we're doing that. So come on down, guys. And uh, just a moment, I'll pray. And if you have that, just hold it up in the air in a minute. And we'll stop by and get that. We'll do it again tonight. And uh, you just pray and ask God to help you do what you're supposed to do. Let's pray together. Lord, bless this time. Bless his commitments. Might you receive glory for it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.